Jeez, you're gonna make me cry. Um, her her love was like a a constant sort of blanket that I had over me that kept me warm, that I could just uh, think about and I could feel it all the time and just being able to feel it made me smile, made me happy and made me know that uh, no matter how things were, that it'd be okay as long as I could go and talk to her. This is kind of rough because my first love dumped me like a month ago <laughs> and I'm sort of still going through that. But she's a really great person. I think before I met her, I had this idea of what love was supposed to be because I had had a long-term girlfriend before her. And I figured, well, I guess everybody's just sort of uh, bearing through the, the tough times and the not liking your partner. And that's what love is, is the ability to bear through it. But now after I, I met my last girlfriend, I realized that love doesn't have an upper limit. <laughs> and you should really be feeling it even through the hard times you should still feel it and you should still smile when you think about her and I mean that's why even now as much as it hurts to not be with her uh, I still smile when I think about her I'm still happy to see her succeed and see her follow her dreams and uh, a real love I think will last forever even if you don't stay with the person so yeah. <laughs> oh my first love uh, it's been nine years since I've met him but the funny thing is we're now in a relationship and I think that he's gonna be the one that I'm with forever we met in high school I was a sophomore and he was a freshman and it was math class with Miss Batman. I just remember him drawing shoes and it's really funny because now he's a shoemaker. He makes boots for a living and wants to do a bunch of other things. But I just distinctly remember him wearing a green t-shirt and drawing in his little five star notebook and he's making a pair of Jordans that look really cool. and. He was so quiet and he seemed really awkward around me. I think I scared him. Well, if you ask him actually, I think, I think he'd say that I was pretty outgoing and I scared him like way too much. And then over the course of the pandemic, we started talking and started dating and it's been about a year now and here we are. I don't think I'd ever want to be with anybody else for the rest of my life. It's funny, I always looked for him in everybody that I knew exes, terrible people. But now, I mean, here we are. We're here now and I'm really happy to be with him. And I hope that it continues to be that way. Oh, well, um, if you want to hear it, um, my first love, I was 14 and um, we were madly in love. Um, madly in love. I was in high school and um, she, she took me for a walk in the rain um, on Black Hill uh, in Morro Bay. I knew right away uh, that I was madly in love with her. We were together for four years. Keja, Keja was her name. I, I never thought that we would never not be together again. I, I was at a music festival and somebody said, well, that's your first relationship. It's it's not going to last. And that was crazy to me. I, I was like, we will be together forever. No doubt. But that's not how life works. And um, when we stopped dating, I stopped eating and lost 60 pounds because I, I was just so entrapped in her love. My brother, he passed away recently and um, 
the one thought that I had was, uh, well, he never had a geisha, you know, he never, <laughs> he never had somebody like that. I hope that everyone has a first love because it means the world. It's uh, an essential human experience to fall in love for the first time. Oh, God, <laughs> so embarrassing. <laughs> there was this girl in my class, I won't use her name just in case she sees this and she gets embarrassed, but um, I, I just had recently realized that I was gay and I was a coward. <laughs> so I had my friend come with me to confess to this girl. And I guess because there were two people, she was like, sure, yeah. And then we like hung out the rest of the day. And then after school, I get home and she messaged me. She was like, I don't actually like you. I just felt too awkward to say no. And it was like, it's so crushing because I was so into this girl for so long and I was just like I can't go to school tomorrow. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> laughing at me. <laughs> my first love was I really believe that this is my first love was in kindergarten. His name is Cody and we kissed in the McDonald's play tubes and he got me a big stuffed bear for Valentine's Day and our moms were friends but our moms weren't friends first. They were friends because we were in love. And I met him the very first day of school. And um, I don't know where he is, but I hope he's okay. <laughs> <laughs> How long did that relationship last? Only kindergarten. All of kindergarten. Ended after kindergarten. Because he fell in love with another girl named Laura. <laughs> this is all true. <laughs> were you heartbroken? Yeah. There was a big scene on the playground on the blacktop. And I had a circle of girls around us. And I said, pick, me or Lara? And he didn't answer. And then I threw a stick on the ground and I said, fiddlesticks, and I walked away. It was all true. <laughs> and that was the day we broke up. <laughs> Can you tell us how his love made you feel? Oh my gosh. Um, his love made me feel like I was not six years old but in fact, eternal. <laughs> okay, my first love happened to me in my life when I was 19 years old. Ended up to be 55 years of a wonderful marriage and he just passed away November 3rd, 2020. You're gonna make me cry, Santa, now, because he's gone now. Oh, beautiful. Uh, he cherished me. He didn't expect me to be a person who did everything for him, hand and foot. He pitched in and did things, you know, that uh, I think for sure that he was not taught as a young boy to do because he was from the era that where parents thought that boys didn't cook, boys didn't clean, boys didn't wash clothes, boys didn't have to learn to do that stuff. But he did it. He just could do, would do the best that he could to help me further my education and to become a teacher. You know, that was my goal and, and I met my goal because I had the type of husband who just cherished everything that I wanted to do as far as our marriage was concerned and he allowed it without even saying one word against it. We put God's number one and that's how we made it for 55 years. Well, I think my very first love was the love of a dog. Mm. His name was Leroy. I think it wasn't just my love, it was the whole family's love. When my parents got divorced, I was five years old and the story is that they didn't really care about the custody of the children. They carried, they, they fought more over the dog. How did that make you feel? Well, I think he was worth it. <laughs> I think the children are more problematic. Oh gosh. <laughs> um, I'm like, I feel like I'm totally, not like totally sure what love is. The movies tell you it'll it'll be like a spark and you'll know. But then I like talk to my mom and she's like, no, you have to be realistic. Like, <laughs> um, and so I'm not really sure. But I think about how like people get divorced and stuff and how people like, you know, 
so often like think they found it and like figured it out and they didn't and that's just me overthinking but like I think about that too like how it's it's really hard to know okay my first love is a drug addict and I hope he's alive somewhere because I don't talk to him anymore but I love him a lot um, but you know you never know who it'll come after so you never know who they're gonna be and that was when I was 14 and we were married for five years and it just kind of went really really fast downhill is it okay with you that I'm asking follow-up questions? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it happens to people. It's really sad. It's just life, though. You kind of have to get over it. it sounds super rude and cruel, but it's just part of the whole experience. Bad shit happens. What was the hardest part of the whole thing? Um, like, I feel like most people would say, like, realizing that I can't fix him or solve the problem on my own but I think the hardest part was just like watching your person hurt themselves over and over again you can't actually do anything you can like try to do stuff but um, no you're powerless that's it so just watching your person hurt sucks if you could give advice to maybe other people who are going through the same thing what would you want to tell them um, two things. One, it's not your fault. And two, whether you've known the person since you were 14 or you got married like two years after you met, you have no idea who people are going to turn out to be. And that's just how it is. That's the risk you take of meeting people. And sometimes it turns out really good. Sometimes it doesn't. Hey everyone, for those of you who are new, my name is Thoraya and I'm the girl behind the camera. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified every time I have a new episode up. And follow me on Instagram, I'll be posting more on there. As always, thank you guys for everything. I love you all and I'll see you next time.